The first sales estimates of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S have come in, and it paints a unique picture, but I think some people might be looking at this picture in a bit of a wrong way. And Nintendo is making a very interesting change to Nintendo Switch manufacturing that has me raising an eyebrow, and I'm surprised no one else is really talking about this because it could be a very interesting thing. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So November of 2020 obviously brought about a lot of fun things. Thanksgiving just wrapped up here in the United States. I ate a lot of turkey and stuffing and I'm still, I'm still eating some. I probably gained about 10 pounds, but you know what? That's okay because the more interesting thing, of course, was the launch of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, two brand new powerful consoles that people just need to buy up and scalp online because they're absolute scumbags. Be sure to take a look at the PlayStation 5 scalping video if you want to vomit in your mouth a little bit just to see how low we have sunk as humanity do not feed into the scalpers do not buy from the scalpers but of course a lot of people were very interested in the sales data for both of these systems how was the playstation 5 performing how is the xbox series x and the xbox series s performing well we have our first rough sales data estimate this is coming from us from vgcharts.com and they're basically saying that it is a playstation dominated thing which shouldn't really be that huge of a surprise allegedly 2.1 million to 2.5 million units of the PlayStation 5 were sold in total on its two launch days and the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S was an estimated 1.2 to 1.4 million units sold during that same time frame so about a two to one ratio for the PlayStation 5 which I don't think should really come as a huge surprise to people when you look at the PlayStation 4 versus the Xbox one I mean let's be realistic the PlayStation 4 was the better console when it came to things like exclusive games that of course sold really well on the PlayStation PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4 completely dominated the Xbox One, so to only see a 2 to 1 difference is actually kind of interesting in my opinion, and I think once you break down the data, the estimated data that is, a little bit more, it paints a very unique picture that I don't think a lot of people necessarily expected. Now, allegedly, the Xbox series of consoles, the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S, sold about 780,000 units in the US on launch day, while the launch day estimate for the PlayStation 5 in the US is at 1.2 million. So that is a very small margin. And considering the lineup library of the PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox Series X and S, I think that's a very telling thing. Now, of course, both of these systems are going to sell very well. New technology always sells very well, especially around the launch. People want to buy these systems. They want to be the kid that has the brand new console on the block and stuff like that. I get it. You know, it's sort of a flex. And then you have the scalpers buying up a lot of things. But to see the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S sell 780,000 units comparative to 1.2 million units for the PlayStation 5 is actually very interesting to me because I mean, what are the Xbox Series X people really playing? Like on my Xbox Series X, I'm picking up a lot of third-party games, games like NBA 2K21 Next Generation Edition. I got Watch Dogs on there. I also have um, Call of Duty on there, which don't don't buy Call of Duty. It, it's not good this year. It doesn't it doesn't play good. But to see that sort of smallish gap between the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 5 is interesting because there's no Halo. Like I think if Halo would have came out, this would have been a completely different story and could have been potentially a lot more neck and neck now of course some of this is due to supply constraints obviously it's very hard to get your hands on a playstation 5 it's very hard to get your hands on an xbox series x but i really think it's telling because obviously the playstation 5 is going to sell well worldwide you know in japan people are going to buy a playstation 5 they're never going to buy the xbox branded systems but to see a small gap like that in the united states could be a very interesting future now of course you got to remember the playstation 5 does have big games coming out in the springtime but can they keep up with supply constraints that are obviously sort of hindering how many systems they can sell and how will xbox be able to counteract this i think it's a very impressive start for xbox i know most people will look at this and say oh the playstation 5 is beating it two to one you know big surprise but i think the xbox series x and s doing so well at the launch is very interesting to me because like i said there is no sort of halo game so i'm looking at this with like a half glass full mentality i know most people will look at it with a half glass empty mentality but it's definitely a great start for both systems it shows how 
popular video games are the video game industry is alive and well but i think once we start to hit the springtime when things sort of slow down a bit and maybe manufacturing begins to ramp up that's when you're going to see a really interesting picture and finally if there's another company that makes video games they're called nintendo and they have a system called the nintendo switch we might have talked about it once or twice before on this channel but the nintendo switch was a very very hot item in 2020 and it continues to be a hot item a lot of this of course was spurned on by animal crossing the world pretty much went into lockdown right around when animal crossing came out and now animal crossing is one of the best-selling games of all time on the nintendo switch just absolutely insane numbers for that game you of course have the fact that the nintendo switch was sold out on all retailers online so even though nintendo's 2020 was a bit weak overall for a lot of people myself included i you know there wasn't many titles that really hit with me overall for the mass audience that nintendo loves to cater to it was a very successful year for them it's so much in fact that they are still having supply constraint issues and still having manufacturing issues with the nintendo switch and the nintendo switch Lite. but now it looks like supply issues are actually going to be a bit of a thing of the past because now they are expanding who is manufacturing the nintendo switch and i think this is a very interesting change for nintendo because i kept thinking why does this company name sound so familiar i feel like we've talked about them before so essentially according to bloomberg nintendo has added sharp as a assembler of its nintendo switch console according to people directly involved in the manner as it works to stabilize production and hedge against us and china trade tensions so the main assembler when it comes to the Nintendo Switch right now is Foxconn Technology, but Foxconn actually owns a stake in Sharp. So basically what they're allowing them to do is now have another manufacturer of the Nintendo Switch, not necessarily in China, to basically help improve production of the Nintendo Switch systems because like I said, it's still a very popular system. So why does Sharp sound so familiar to me? You know, I feel like I've talked about Sharp and the Nintendo Switch before in the past, but obviously this is the first time that they've been working together and I thought about it and I realized something. We've actually talked about Sharp and the Nintendo Switch before, and that's where things get very interesting to me with this Nintendo Switch manufacturing situation. Because last year, there was heavy rumors about the Nintendo Switch revision, not the Nintendo Switch Lite, but the one with an improved battery. And the big thing that was going around with it was that Sharp was potentially manufacturing the screen by using IGZO screens with the Nintendo Switch upgraded model. Now, this never came to fruition. When the Nintendo Switch revision came out, people quickly realized that it was not an IGZO screen but so many people were talking about it very reputable people as well that it sort of started a mentality that maybe sharp will end up working with nintendo in some way shape or form now looking at the sharp igzo screen the sharp igzo screen is a bit of older technology but it is capable of things that nintendo supposedly will be doing with the revised nintendo switch pro model in 2021 which i think makes sense and we'll get into that in a bit but the sharp igzo screen is capable of things like 4k it is capable of things like better battery life and they've actually done a 5.5 inch mobile screen before that is capable of 4k in the past so the igzo screen is something that's very versatile in what it could be done and what it could be applied to as well now in this article from bloomberg which i will have a link to in the description box down below should you choose to read it instead of listening to my soothing voice read it to you but basically they also doubled down on the fact that they expect a beefed up nintendo switch to come out in 2021 likely with 4k graphic support to help extend the Nintendo Switch's life cycle. So could we potentially see them not do a mini OLED screen, but instead go to this sharp IGZO screen that was originally rumored back in 2019? I kind of think this is a where there's smoke, there's fire situation. We don't know what this Nintendo Switch revision will have, but I think we're pretty much all in agreement that there will have to be some sort of a Nintendo Switch Pro model, because let's be realistic here. The Nintendo Switch is a great system. Nobody is denying that. Nobody is saying that it doesn't have a great software library, but it is showing its age a little bit. When you look at a game like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, it sort of struggles with that game. And you could say, oh, maybe that's just because of bad programming, but this was essentially a second party Nintendo title. Nintendo worked on this game with Koei Tecmo. The frame rate dips and things like that are definitely very visible in this game. And when you have things like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X off to hot starts, Nintendo wants the Nintendo Switch to still be a viable platform for consumers. Of course, Nintendo themselves said that they want to extend the Nintendo Switch's life cycle, not necessarily making a success 
successor to the system, but just something to complement it. And I think that's where things get very interesting. When it comes to this revised Nintendo Switch, some people think that it's potentially going to, you know, be a successor and it won't play your original Nintendo Switch games. Pish posh. That's absolutely ridiculous. I think it'll just play your Nintendo Switch games better with things like an Igzo screen or a mini OLED screen or DLSS technology that will upscale these games to look even better and run even better due to AI technology. So I think this partnership is very interesting that now that Nintendo is working with Sharp, could this be the introduction to the Sharp Igzo screen in a revised 2021 Nintendo Switch model? I mean, I think the sky's the limit with this. It's going to be a very interesting 2021 overall for Nintendo anyways, because they got to do something. Obviously, they have to have some new games coming out. We already have a look at the spring lineup of things. There's so many odd things that are ending on March 31st of 2021. Of course, Super Mario Maker was just announced to be shutting down on the Wii U on that date as well. You have things like Super Mario 35th that's going away, Super Mario 3D All-Stars that's also going away. So is something happening in April? You know, I don't know, man. I just think it's very interesting and there's a lot of things lining up right now that could make for a very interesting 2021. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel. Yesterday, we uploaded the December games for the Nintendo Switch video. Um, you know, there's some cool stuff coming out. Immortals Phoenix Rising is actually pretty good. I've been playing it a bunch. I'll have a video up in a couple days on it. It's actually a, a very unique game, and I, I, I'm actually having a lot more fun with it than I thought I would. And as always guys i'll catch you guys on the next video later